I'm Liz, and this is the presentation about my bachelor's thesis project, a short study of indie Atomic developers. Who are they and why do they make games? To start with, let's give a very short overview of what Atome is. The simplest definition I can give is that they're a type of game that originated in Japan in 1994, in which a usually female player experiences an interactive romance story about a female protagonist romancing one of several male love interests, usually in the visual novel format. In the Otome, in this context, are Otome games made in the English-speaking developer community. Uh, there is an indie Otome community in Japan, but the Japanese language community was effectively inaccessible for this study on account of I do not speak Japanese. Uh, the use of indie Otome as shorthand for the English-speaking community is applicable only in this study. Normally, we'd clarify what counts as indie, but using Jesper Ewell's framework of the three ways a game can be indie, financial, aesthetic, and cultural, Atome games made in English are effectively indie by default. Uh, the definition of Atome is more nuanced than listed here, but this definition is a good starting point. So this research project approaches indie Atome developers with three hypotheses. Uh, this community is majority female, more queer than average game development spaces, and driven to make games by a gap in the market. The games they want to play do not exist or they cannot see themselves in the games that do exist. These questions were explored via a survey and interviews with indie Atome developers. Due to the definition debates, the requirements for respondents were only that they consider a game they are making or have made to be Atome and to be at least 16 years old to ensure GDPR compliance. 43 developers answered the survey at the end of which they could volunteer contact information for an interview. Nine developers offered to be interviewed uh, and had the time to complete the interview process. The survey was divided into five parts, how devs define Atome games, games the developers consider representative of Atome, the experience in game dev the respondents have, their motives for making games, and then a very short demographic section. Interviews began with questions to get context for the developers and their games, then followed up on their survey results, getting more nuanced opinions than can really be gathered in a survey. Privacy was a major concern of this survey. The majority of indie Atome uh, devs, including myself, operate under anon or pseudonymity, and there is a perception among some devs that they would suffer ridicule or be stigmatized for their work. Some developers create explicit content, adding to those concerns. Therefore, almost all questions were made optional, except the demographics questions and the primary motives of the developers, and these questions included a prefer not to say option. Thankfully, devs were willing to answer most questions. They answered all multiple choice questions and the majority answered write-in questions. The results regarding the hypotheses were pretty promising. 75% of respondents identify as women and 80% identify as some flavor of queer. These results can be compared to the Higher Education Video Game Alliance's statistics taken from graduates of video game programs in colleges and universities. These results are probably generous to the number of minorities in, game industry, in the game industry, given that women are more likely to attend university in the United States, where the majority of respondents were from, and most respondents were young and therefore more likely to identify as queer. Uh, in this study, slightly less than 30% of respondents were women and 20% identified as queer, meaning that India Tome results effectively inverted the ratio of the larger game industry. The number of participants identifying as queer was a surprise and may indicate sampling bias of some variety. That said, Atome games have been moving towards more inclusivity over the years. A strong queer presence isn't a shock, it's just the magnitude of the presence that came as a surprise. Regarding motives, the results are a partial confirmation of my hypothesis. 80% of respondents indicated that either the games they wanted to play didn't exist, or they made games to add diverse representation to Atome games, the two motives of the 10 that are driven by an absence in the existing games of some kind. However, when asked to choose one motive of the 10 as the most important, this dropped 32% of devs. Seven of the developers who were interviewed cited one or both of these absence motives as important to them. And of these, only three said that they would stop making games if the type of content they wanted already existed. So it's difficult to say that this gap is the primary force behind developers making games. The sample is small, but at least suggests that the feelings are not universal for developers. That said, 80% of devs citing the gap as at least one reason they make games does partially prove the hypothesis. The survey turned up some other results highlighting that the definition of Atome is not agreed upon by the whole community. 
The most common definition given by developers allows for players to choose the gender of their protagonist and for non-male love interests uh, to exist, provided the majority is still male. Even non-romantic routes are welcome, provided romance is available. There was disagreement from developers if Atomic Games are meant to be for women or about women or both, but there was a general agreement that there is some tie between Atomic Games and womanhood or femininity that is part of the definition. Indie Atome devs define Atome in ways that preserve the expectation that these games are for slash about women, uh, but are more open to non-normative expressions of womanhood and queer identities that feel comfortable in Atome spaces. This wider definition of Atome leads to some overlap with the Yuri and BL labels. For developers whose definition of Atome overlap with Yuri, same-sex female romance is often not, but not always marketed to men, and boys love same-sex male romance is often but not always marketed to women. Uh, there's ambiguity about where one label ends and one begins. The addition of the Amare label as an umbrella label for diversity-minded relationship-focused games is also a point of ambivalence. It's considered a useful label for games, but also risks being turned into a label that non-normative Atome is pushed into by homo uh, homophobes. Speaking personally for a moment, I was in the Reddit trenches during the fight that prompted the coining of Amare, and Amare was in no small part coined in response to homo by and transforming it in the larger Atome player community. So this risk is to some extent genuine. Indie Atome is also relatively young and small. Uh, when asking developers if there are any games that they would expect other developers to have played or know about, one game stood head and shoulders above the rest, Our Life Beginning and Always, which, in fairness, is a wildly successful game by a full-time developer with a pretty ambitious premise of allowing significant player expression of themselves. I was hoping to find a canon of games that could be looked at to understand Indie Atome the way someone could read books like Dracula and the work of the Bronte sisters to understand Gothic literature. But the fact there's only one game that really stands out as canon in the community signals that Indie Atome as a label is still very much developing. After this research, I think this means I've done the largest survey of Indie Atome developers to date, at least in ac academic context. It definitely wasn't perfect. At least one survey question was worded very badly and led to ambiguous results. And I don't have any information at all about things like the age or racial or ethnic identities of developers. This was on purpose to avoid collecting information I wouldn't be using that is sensitive, but it is a noticeable gap in the results. On the bright side, there's a ton of space to explore in the future. The connection between Atome Games and femininity and womanhood is something worth exploring. How Atome Games fare financially in comparison to other types of visual novels is personally relevant. Consent mechanisms in romance games have deep roots in the Atome community and would be very well worth exploring. And there's a possible connection between indie Atome devs and transformative fandom, the type of fandom that writes fan fiction that I would love to explore in the future. There's a lot of ground that can still be covered in this space. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. And thank you so much to all the devs who responded, uh, for everyone who did the survey, who everyone who uh, did interviews, your answers were absolutely invaluable. I could not have done this research without you. Thank you.